Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. Now, before I moved to the new location, a friend of mine at the old place uh, came around and said, could I borrow a drill? I said, yeah, sure. Well, what is it you need? So I got my collection of drill bits out, and I had actually one or two others which aren't here. And he looked at me and he said, God, I'm surprised at you, Peter. They're not up to much, are they? And actually, when I looked at them closely, he was right. Now, virtually all of my Forstner bits were so poor uh, that when I used them, particularly when drilling hardwoods, uh, you, would, you would see smoke. And you see how burnt this one is, for example. And the others are pretty similar. And then I, I came across some of the old drills I had. And, of course, uh, I don't have the uh, brace and bit anymore for these, so I don't know why I hung on to them, really. Um, then there's the ever-popular, <laughs> or so I thought, spade type of uh, drill bit, uh, which are fine if you're working on uh, the first or second fix of a house and you need to drill some holes, you're not really worried about what they look like, well, they're fine. But I don't do that sort of woodwork anymore. And then, you know, the rest of them, well, uh, take these. I bought these specially when I was doing uh, my keyboard cabinet and I needed to run wires through uh, bits of uh, plywood and so on, so I had to do some quite long sections. All of these are virtually blunt now and they've been used so few times it's really frustrating and what about these you know if you want to make a big hole in something these saw type things are awful they don't make a particularly clean hole and again that they're, they're not the sort of thing that, that sort of matches the style of woodwork I do anymore so all of this lot is now going to go to the metal waste at our local dump well, not long after that encounter with my neighbour, uh, I went to last year's d and show. And I thought, well, now's the time to have a jolly good look around and see what drills I might uh, start getting to replace all these old ones. And I was lucky enough to have met a, a German gentleman who, who was working on one of the stands there. His name was Ralph Hunk. Uh, I hope, uh, Ralph, if you're watching this, I've pronounced your uh, last name correctly. Now, Ralph, with his business partner, run a company called Famag. Now, Famag was originally a family-run business uh, in Germany, which had been going for at least 130 years, maybe longer. And uh, they specialise in drills, drills of all types. And so he was very polite to me, I was very polite to him. Um, I, <laughs> I spoke an kleinen bisschen Deutsch, uh, so I didn't embarrass myself too much. Uh, and, um, and that was I came away from there. And I hadn't really made a decision what, um, what I might uh, look for in terms of replacement drills. And then it was probably a couple of months later, I was visiting my professional woodworking guru, David, and um, uh, chatting to him about drills and things. And he said, oh, yes, of course, uh, I've switched over to FAMAG, and that's what I now use entirely. I went back there recently and spoke to Jake and asked him about uh, uh, FAMAG in their business. Right now, we're in the West Country. It's an awful day outside, and I'm sorry about the noise you can hear from the weather hitting the, the roof of the workshop. Actually, I'm not at my workshop. I'm in... Uh, Jake's workshop. Jake is an established uh, cabinet maker. Uh, we've known each other for years and he's been buying uh, FAMAG bits and pieces for a lot longer than I've known about them. So we bought, or well, started buying them about a year ago um, and we've used them since. We've pretty much switched our whole collection across to FAMAG drill bits and we find them so accurate and so precise that we wouldn't change again. I mean they are and what about wear? Are they, do, they, do they keep their edge because well? Perfect. They don't wear at all and they're very, they're very hard wearing. So. How important is accuracy to you? Um, very. We worked at within 0.1 of a millimetre, so I mean, we'd need the most precise drill bits we can buy. Yeah, because you do some pretty, pretty smart mm. stuff. I know that. I've seen yeah. it in various magazines as well. Okay. Yeah. Jake, thank you very much indeed. That's quite all right, Peter. Uh, very, very welcome popping into the workshop, and the drill bits are, are really good, and I'd recommend you, you look at them and get some. Thank you very much That's indeed, okay. Jake. Cheers. Uh, I've been lucky enough now to have received some samples from FAMAG, uh, which I'm going to show you. And uh, just as Jake was really impressed with them, so I've been really impressed with these samples. 
uh, let me show you uh, what I've got here. Uh, one of the things that I've always liked is the ability for some Forstner bits to have an uh, interchangeable uh, centre pin here. You can see you can replace that centre pin with a pin like this one and you end up with what might otherwise be described as a, a normal Forstner style bit. Now a normal Forstner style bit can be very tricky if you're trying to drill at an angle. So those that have a pin that can be replaced with a longer uh, guide point and perhaps one like this one which has got um, a drill function to it can be a great advantage. I'll just tighten that up a little bit. Now as you can probably see this extended centerpiece now can start drilling into the wood. It can be established in the wood so it's keeping true to this angle and then by the time the actual Forstner part comes into contact with the wood uh, it's not going to uh, deflect in any way and that is absolutely super if you want to drill angled holes. I've then been sent uh, two normal uh, Forstner style uh, bits uh, this one's 35 millimeters and this one's 12. More about this one in a second or two. Uh, but whilst I've got this large one in my hand, let me just explain the, uh, the way that this design uh, works. First of all, this is a high-grade uh, alloy steel, uh, and it's been hardened. And it has this wave pattern around the edge, which we've seen uh, other manufacturers use. But it's also got these sort of grooves that you see around here. And the whole design is such that this drill bit will run very cool as it goes through even uh, a hardwood uh, like oak or, or mahogany and so on um, because it's the overheating of a cutter uh, that leads to its downfall when it starts to lose its edge because it's losing its temper and so on and so forth. Now I really want to try and get this as close as I can so that you can see just how clean the entry side is and the exit side. And I'm going to touch the cutter straight away and that cutter is not hot. It's warm but it's not hot. Now the smaller one, the 12mm one, I particularly asked if I could uh, have one of these for this video because I use a lot of magnets and these magnets have a diameter of 12 millimeters and I'm forever setting magnets into pieces of wood and then putting a, a very thin uh, plug over the magnet so that the magnet is completely hidden. So I've got the 12 millimeter Forstner cutter and I've got this uh, plug cutter which produces a 12 millimeter plug. Now here's one of my 12 millimeter magnets which I'll just put down carefully out of the way. And I want to set this into this piece of walnut and I'll make a plug out of this other piece of walnut. Now there's my hole and my magnet fits in there. In fact, so, so tight that the air won't come out from underneath. Now this is quite a substantial piece of steel and because of that it's going to make a very clean plug. So there's my plug and I'll try and get this so it's focused nicely so you can see how clean it is on both sides. So I put my plug in now and obviously one would line up the grain so, they, so it matches and so I'm now just going to put a little drop of glue there and I'll show you the, the finished job and uh, I've made no real attempt to match the grain of the wood uh, but just look how clean uh, the two pieces meet. And if I wet it like that you can see there it's as clean as anything and here's another one I've done and you can see there just how clean that is. Again, uh, I've not made any effort to match the grain. Now, FAMAG make a huge range of brad point cutters, and uh, they also do them in different lengths. You can see I've got 
the long version here as well. And they have four categories for the quality, uh, down at hobbyist at the lowest end, up to uh, the superb or excellent quality at this end. And there are two others in between. But these are the top of the range and the points are extremely sharp. I must tell you, I accidentally dropped this on my finger the other day and actually made a, a very neat puncture mark and um, it didn't have hurt. Now I find it particularly difficult to, to do long straight cuts, but I'm gonna do my best. And I'm gonna try and go from the center here to the center on the other side. I suspect that's through now. So let's see how we got on. And don't expect this to be in the middle. No, it's not. So that, that's my, my judgment. Let's, let's see if I can get it to go a little straighter. Well, that was a bit better. So, not so difficult after all. And they have an interesting countersink, uh, which can be used with these, and you just basically put the drill in however far you need it, depending what uh, uh, task you're doing. Tighten up the two little set screws on either side. And these will fit a range of different drill sizes in the middle. So you can countersink and drill at the same time. And one interesting thing which was pointed out to me is that you can actually reverse this uh, to give you a quite useful depth stop. You just take that out like so, put it in the other way. And you've got quite a useful flat surface here to act as a depth stop if you're doing repeated cuts to a certain depth. And that could be used on this uh, long version as well, if you wished. And there's that uh, countersink, nice and clean. And the exit hole is equally clean on the other side. Now, I hope this uh, little demonstration of these particular uh, cutters from Famac has been useful. And I'd like to uh, thank them for sending these samples to me so that I could make this video. But they have a whole range of, of, of cutters uh, and including some absolutely magnificent sets. Now, the cutters uh, range in quality and so you should decide what suits you best. And if you have some particular sizes that you uh, use a lot, then perhaps get the most expensive cutters in that particular size and maybe the cheaper ones in the sizes that you only use once in a while. And I'm really grateful to David and Jake uh, for persuading me that Famag really is the way to go. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.